computational design isn't only about making these hypnotic animations and, and twisting facades. And I feel it's about responsibility and the kind where a single line of code can really cost a company millions of dollars. So today I want to go beyond the cool looking videos. In the last video and in several videos before, I talk about the term computational design and how I'm not, I'm not a great fan of it because uh, I feel that computational design should be about everything but design. I think that the design itself should be left to humans with uh, doing it with a pencil and paper. And uh, I do believe that there are some tools that can help us with design, but I think that's a very, very small percentage of, of what the computational design is. Very, very small, or what the computational design should be. And if you looked at the uh, internet content online, it feels like that's all it is. But, but it's not. So that's why I want to talk about, uh, uh, about these cool looking parametric videos and two sides of the computational design or parametric design uh, coin. So the problem, my problem is that this, this public perception versus reality. Like we can, we can start there. And then people often think this computational design is connected to this, uh, yeah, cool videos, right? Uh, and the online kind of celebrates this, and I see this as kind of a front end, right? So we, you have these parametric facades morphing in Grasshopper. You, the people are moving sliders. The shape is changing. The genetic algorithms are generating million other different geometries, and that's all can be very useful on specific projects. I'm not talking. I'm not don't have anything uh, against against that. But you should understand that this kind of uh, colorful attractor patterns that you see in motion loops and whatnot, they are just uh, one side of the coin of parametric design. And in my worldview and in my world generally, that's a very small percentage. In my 20 year career, I almost never did that. That was practically useful. Maybe five, not even 5%, two or 3% of our work included some of these tools that look cool, uh, and actually help in the design. Most of us, most of our work is what I call the back end, and I, I will come to that in a minute. I did all of this. There is many of my early videos that show these kind of animations, that show these kind of tools, and that's okay. That's you need something uh, that's that's visually appealing. You need something to attract people to the field, and so on. I'm just telling you that in practice, this is not always very useful. And at the very minimum, there is a lot of other things that are useful that you, you don't see. So that's what I'm talking about here, that this all other side that you don't see. So for me, there is these two worlds of computational design. There is this thing that I just described, which for me is a front end that gets most, att most attention. You have these flashy visuals, you have the grasshopper tricks, you have the Instagram reels. And uh, the purpose of this algorithm is usually some kind of exploration. It's very often used in the education and so on. And it's presented as a tool to help you in the design. In the previous video exactly, and in many other videos, I talk about this design phase and how you rarely need so much help in the design phase. And the design phase itself is a very small percentage of the whole uh, building phase. So it's not the full picture. It's a very small part of the puzzle. What is the bigger part of the puzzle is the, the back end. So every project, has a non-flashy part of it. It has serious data, fabrication, drawing, plans, reports, mm. schedules, and so on. And they're all connected with uh, precision and with responsibility. So those are the two words I would like to emphasize. And so writing programs that uh, generate, generate full digital things, generate fabrication, CNC files, assembly fly, files, and so on. The mistakes you make are not in pixels, like the mistakes you make are financial. Single lines of code can cost millions of dollars, literally, and I talk about this in, in, in other videos. So a misplaced number can sell, send 100 steel beams uh, to, the, to, to, uh, to the machine and cut them wrongly. And that's where the real responsibility is, but also it's not something you can really show uh, in, in, in colors or in flashy pictures. These projects and this uh, that, that we usually work on and these uh, parts of the projects also cannot be shared publicly. Now you're entering the area of IP restrictions, NDAs, proprietary workflows, 
And the design part and educational part are usually much more free. So that's why you see a lot of this flashy contact content, maybe thinking that's what computational design is or that's what parametric design is. But, uh, but it's not. The, 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 it's like the iceberg, right? The, the main bulk of it, it's hidden under the water and it's invisible online. That, that is one of the reasons also why I, uh, I often talk about serious computational design. Again, not loving the term computational design because we're, we're, when we do it, we are way uh, away from design phase. But okay, design can be seen as something very broadly. You can see the whole process of designing as design. So I guess I can, I can accept it on some level. But I would, I do like to add this, uh, this word serious where there are part of computational design and programming where it's not about being flashy. Uh, it's about being reliable. Again, the two words I emphasized are precision and responsibility. And so this is where the design actually meets the engineering, the automation, and the auto accountability. You know. And uh, ironically, I think that's where the real career growth and impact can happen. So if you're a computational designer and you want to make real impact, you should be gravitating toward this invisible part. And you should know that in practice, when people pay you money to do something, they either pay for your time, which is usually the first level of, of entry. You're paid for your time. You're doing some tasks, but you don't take too much responsibility. And uh, these kind of uh, design stages where you use computational design, uh, uh, computational tools for the design phase, they don't carry too much responsibility. But later on, uh, people might start, might, uh, start paying you for, for taking the responsibility. And that's a whole lot of a different game, but it's also that usually it pays more. What you should know is that this exists, this computational design, full with responsibility and extremely precise exists, but you can see a lot of it online. That's the whole point of this video, to, for those ones that maybe don't know the, the subject, are not into the subject, don't uh, look at this computational design from the side, know that there is the back end of this, where there is much more uh, precision and much more responsibility. It's not as cinematic. Uh, we, when we create videos, they are for internal use and they're not for sharing. And um, my message to aspiring computational designers is that if you love this grasshopper aesthetics, there is nothing wrong with that. That's great. We all start there. You should start there and you should continue working there. That's, that's great. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, you don't have to start. You don't have to stop there because from my experience, even though a lot of these, you know, flashy videos show how somebody came up with the design using a lot of parametric tools, I can bet you that nine out of 10 times, if not 99 out of 100 times, the architect actually took pen and pencil and designed the shape, made the final decision, informed by many things that the computer cannot process. Again, culture, ethics, societal uh, conditions, politics even. There is a lot of things that the human held holds in their head because they have a full model of the world when they're designing. And, uh, and then once they do actually design, these kind of videos are, uh, are made retroactively, you know, just to prove uh, that that's how it, it was done. But very often it's not. Anyway, I'm not going to go in there. I just want to say that if you're outside of this computational this world, know that the computational design that you see online is the tip of the iceberg and that behind every flash animation there is basically an invisible ecosystem of scripts, plugins, data, automation, making real architecture possible and it's the quiet uh, side of the field. But it's the one that's actually creating the foundations for the future. A lot of the buildings that you see out there, the cool ones, would not be able without these tools, but you never heard of people that do that and you never saw the tools and you never saw the videos and you never saw the code because that's all uh, proprietary. Computational design has two sides, the one you see and then one that you usually don't. 
the front end is there to inspire and the back end is there to build and to make it work. And if you're serious about architecture, uh, just I wanted you to know that the back end uh, is huge and that's where a lot of the real design happens. Talk to you soon. Subscribe, uh, follow on all channels and uh, looking forward to talking to you again very soon. Stay free.